Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. All right. Probably I've got I've got I've got minutes to sign. What have I got in here? I've got an agenda. How are you, Pat? Fine, thank you, sir. I've got, right. I've, got this. I've only got one too. Running, running. I'm going away tomorrow, so running, running. Probably, yeah, probably. Uh, I think I he's left already. Hey, yeah. Mr. Buckland. Let's have another one of these for a uh, fair lady. That's all you got then. This one. What is it? Site development coverage GAF. How is it though? It's for the granite place next to Bonacle Bills. What is it? The granite. The granite place. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. We're gonna sit. Gentlemen, wanna sit down or take it out, please? I got a couple more. Oh, thank you. Uh, and keep it quiet, please, so we can hear. All right, very well. Uh, we, we on. All right, I want to thank you all for coming in. Gonna thank you all. Maybe we can share. All right. Thank you all for coming in, and welcome to the Wareham Zoning Board of Appeal tonight, Wednesday, August 11, 2021. It is 6:35 p.m., and we are at the room 320 at the Multi-Service Center, Wareham, Marion, Wareham, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass. I want to call the meeting to order and make a roll call. Uh, our associate member, Mr. Chris Conti, to my far right. Mrs. Uh, regular member, Mrs. Debanese, Veronica. Our clerk, Jim McAbachi. If I left, uh, regular member, Jake Morrison. Associate member, Richard Semple. Myself, the chair, Nazi al Also present, uh, independent engineer, uh, Mr. Charles Rowley, professional engineer. Also present, uh, Present, uh, our town planner, Mr. Ken Buckland, uh, his assistant, Ms. Sonia Raposo, and uh, this is it. So that's 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 all for everyone here. The commission is not here. Okay, this is it for for the members. Uh, we have some preliminary business to do. We have the ma uh, the minutes for July 28, 2021. I believe that. Um we also have in my folder to sign the minutes from July 14th, which I believe we reviewed electronically and approved. So I move to sign those tonight. And at the same time, I have reviewed the July 28th minutes. It was a very short meeting. They seem accurate. And I also, at the same time, move to right. approve Any those. discussion on the minutes? No discussion. Okay, so uh, can we move a motion to sign the tw the 14th? I, I, I move both at the same time. The July 14th and Ju 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 July 28th. July 14th, July 28th. Okay. Second by Veronica. All in favor, say aye. Aye, Jim. Aye. You don't have to say your name. Okay. And so aye. Aye. We're off Zoom now. Aye. Aye. Okay, very well. So minutes are good. Signed. Just pass the can, please. All right. Uh, okay, for the solar panel, the the solar bylaw committee, the selectmen had asked me to see who would like to attend the committee. I think this is a great program to go forward in the town with the solar because it's solar is going crazy. In my opinion, it's starting to take up industrial land, good retail area, good uh, residential area. So it's very good move from the selectmen to make a solar uh, committee to discuss that. Uh, we need who's got the time and who would like to go and who would think it will be a good asset for that. Are we, look, are we looking for nominations from anybody or from this board? One, one from each one, one from us. Who's got the time? I don't have time. Richard. How often? And how long is it? Do you yeah, know? How, how often we don't do know. <laughs> it's just meetings. I'm, I'm sure it's at least once a month. It'll, it'll probably be uh, once every uh, few weeks at the beginning and um, uh, probably take about three or four months to, uh, to accomplish. Can we have another one that's empty? You're going for the Springtown meeting with when you have a, a bylaw that you want to present. Okay, so you heard it. So who would like to do it? 
I could be interested in it also, but Veronica, if you want, that's fine. If you have the time. Good. If nobody else, I, I would say to do I would it, say will. Chris is good for it. I would say Chris is good uh, for and it. And Chris is you you you, sure. you would like to and you're willing. Sure, I would like to do. Yeah. That. I nominate Chris Conte as the representative of the Zoning Board of Appeals to serve on the Solar Bylaw Committee. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. On that? Second by Jake. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So, uh, uh, Chris is the nominee. Uh, Sonia, please let the Chairman Whiteside know. Congratulations, Chris. Chris. Thank yeah. you. And uh, what you do, just fill us in every time we'll go from there. Sure. All right. Next time for Swanson Granite, they sent us a plan. If you guys recall that we had uh, approved this, uh, it didn't recall. really need a site plan because it's under ta uh, 10 parking spaces, but they had one done. I did look at it. Uh, I talked to Ken about it. Ken was suggesting a little bit more of buffer on Red Book Road. Instead of swale, add some shrubbery. Because swales is hard to maintain. Not swale, like a, yeah, like a two foot swale, right, Ken? That's right. Yeah, you so. An elevated buffer? Yeah, uh, but I'd rather see more greenery, like more. Or variety or something that provides a, a screen. A strong screen for the residential units, uh, residential homes on uh, Red Brook Road. Over here. Uh, look at page. Well, I, I, I contend that anything that gets done there is going to be improvement over what's there right now. Uh, page six of eight. And look at the Red Brook Road. They do have some shrubbery. They are, they are offering something. BT, what's a BT? They're offering a good buffer zone here between this and that. Yeah, this small is a stuff, good one. Yeah, cranberry bush. Cranberry bushes. H H R. Looks like their commercial operation is going to be out on Cranberry Highway, and this is going to be mostly uh, storage. Right. They put the granite. And a and a secondary, you know, one way in and one out. They can take advantage of the controlled light off Redbrook. I don't have a problem with what they're showing us as is. Are, are these a, evergreens? Is the daylilies evergreens? It's not. So maybe we suggest they put some arborvitaes. I think that'd be a good idea, arborvitae on the Red Brook Road side. Okay. Evergreens that uh, would grow to substantial height. All right, it grows better. It's a good fencing. We want we want to preserve the quality of the residential uh, units over there. All right, so we'll have them add grasses and arborvitaes. Does that sounds real good, everybody? Do we know what these are? That we're yeah. The HHR is the daylilies. Oh, and these it. are SGB. Yeah, these are much of a sp Spiria. It'd be this big around. See, but most of them, they, the they the top, die in the all. winter. Okay. So I would say green. I would say grasses. Grasses and abrivides. Does that sound right? Charlie, any input on that? How many are you going to put? Uh, you have here, what's, how wide is this, like 200 most, feet? Most of what's there is just low stuff except for the pear trees. There's one pear tree on each side of the driveway. So if you're looking for something to block the view, yeah. it's yeah. got to be pretty dense. I would say stagger the abrivides. Every four feet, five feet. Yeah, you don't want them too close that they... Uh, crowd each other out. They kill each other, yeah. But, yeah. but what they've got there, you're going to just see right through it and see over it. Right. <clears throat> and we don't want that. Staggered four or five foot separation, I think, would probably be right. good. Right. Staggered every four or five feet, right. abrivides. Six foot abrivides, staggered every four or five feet. How's that? That sounds good. Okay, let's make a motion. I'm fine with it the way it is, so I'll let somebody else make the motion. Okay, can I have a motion if somebody wishes? Make a motion. I make a motion to uh, incorporate some abrivides along uh, Red First, Brook you got to make a motion to accept the plans as okay. presented. I make a motion to accept the plans as presented with the addition of 
Abervides along Redbrook Road, um, staggered right. four and five feet apart. Very well. Okay, do I have a second on that? Second. Uh, six foot height. Six foot high. S at six foot height. Correct. I'll second that. All right, second by Jake. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Aye. aye. It carried. Want All these right. back, Ken? I got to take these notes once. Yeah, I'll take them back. Recycle them. We'll sit on them for now, okay. Uh, why don't you sign one of the copies so that uh, we have an uh, official copy? Well, one sign. Okay. Right there. And by Jim, right? Anywhere, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking to see if there was a. Uh, I'm just gonna go. Yeah, put a date yet. All right, we'll go for continued public hearing. Frederick Mannix. They moved that out. I think you have a letter. Oh, uh, okay. Where's the letter? That's good. All right. Want to hear this, Jimmy? Read this, buddy. That's from 22-20, continued public hearing. So dated August 9th, an address to the Zoning Board of Appeals we have regarding a request for continuance application for special permit variance and site plan review assesses map 133 lots 1100A and 1101A. That's at address 238 and 240 Sandwich Road in Wareham. Dear Board, I'm requesting a continuance from the August 11th meeting on the above captioned matter due to the fact that I am unable to come to the meeting and represent my client. I respectfully request a new hearing date of August 25th, 2021. The decision deadline to be extended until September 25th, 2021 to allow for peer review of site plan review, traffic study, and updated site plan with information regarding the septic sewer system. Please direct any and all questions to my attention. Very truly yours, Julian A. Morton, Esquire. All right, very well. So they want to continue us till the 25th? So moved. I have, uh, I have a question. I'm, I'm not going to be here. Well, That's okay. Okay. We got a good board now. We got alternates that, that show up and we alternate may, them. They may not uh, uh, go for it. They may, that, that'll be their okay. option. So very well. We can continue then if, if, if we need to. Right. Okay. I, I, I'd pref I'd, huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'd prefer that if that you were yep. here, but I, I don't want to. I don't want us to be the reason that they're held up. Oh, I get you. And I have a question on the date on September. This says October twenty second is the deadline, and she's requesting September. She's she's um, she's continuing the date out. What was the September? In, in accordance with the um, amount of, uh, she's asking for two more weeks, and she's moving the deadline out two weeks. But the deadline is October twenty second. And we're meeting September 25th. Oh, that's the meeting time. Yeah. I thought it was August 25th. My bad. Okay. No Sorry. problem. All right. So we got a motion to continue until August 25th, 22-20. Who made the motion? I did. Oh, Jim, do I have a second on that? I second. Second by Richard. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So it carries the, the 25th. You want this for the um which one? And yes. When was it continued to? August twenty fifth. August twenty fifth. Alright. And but All right, we're gonna start the public hearing. So you guys gonna finish your chit chat. Thirty-seven dash twenty-one Hans Westberg dash variance dash nineteen Wareham Lakeshore Drive map one twenty lot one o two accessory storage structure. <coughs> the, uh, the announcement is in somebody's uh, packet of information. The public hearing notice is uh, attached to somebody's handout. It's right here. No. Is that the one? 
All right, let's get the notice to read it. Gotta read it. Hans Westberg. Is this the one? I have it. Uh, let's see. No, I don't want to read it. Okay. <laughs> the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on August 11th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in room 320 of the Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass. 02571 to consider petition number 37-21 for a variance from the requirements of Article 6, Table 625 under the Wareham Zoning Bylaws to Hans Westberg of 19 West Wareham Lake Shores Drive, Wareham, Mass., proposing to construct a 24-foot by 36-foot accessory storage structure in the front yard of the subject property located at 19 Wareham Lake Shores Drive, Wareham, Mass., Assessor's Map 120, Lot 102, in the R130 Zoning District. All right, very well. This one, Mr. Sample, we sit on in this matter. All right, name and address for the record, and let us know what you're doing. Hans yeah. Westberg, 19 yeah. Wareham Lake Shores yeah. Drive, East Wareham, Mass. If you want to get closer to this so they pick it up online, yeah. Hans Westberg, 19 Wareham Lake Shores Drive, East Wareham, Mass. Okay, ma'am. I'm Tracy Westberg, same address. All right, so want to let us know what you're trying to, planning to do. This isn't it. We're trying to get a garage built. And you're doing it in front of the house? Yes, sir. We have a 65-foot wide piece of property on the opposite on the back side of the house which is my front side of the house is the water the only place for me to put it is in the front yard okay all right because there's no way you could get to the back that's correct right i also i went to the site today and there's two neighbors alongside i believe that's what they're trying to achieve is what their neighbors have there's the pictures in the included in your packet of the two homes that have garages that are already there that are right abutters of myself but there's five in our development i think all right I see that. <clears throat> I, I, excuse, I, excuse me um how far is it off the lot line i just can't find it in here the, the proposed building how far is it off what off the off your lot line it's written on there from the okay, engineer sorry. i don't know why i didn't <laughs> What did, the, what did the all right building inspector have to say I, i'm a, i'm working without the benefit of one of the packets the but I, I understand the situation needs okay it's a variance anyone in the audience want to speak in favor or against this project okay i'm good these are two right next door yeah, i see none all right let's start with chris do you have a question chris? No, no i have no questions i'm all set with it veronica i don't see how far it is off the lot line anywhere either you don't see what i there was a question of for how far off the lot line it's placed, and I don't see that in the packet. It's very blurry, what uh, a copy of what we have. You know how so far I, the front of your garage is going to be from the street? Didn't 25 feet. 25 feet. Yes. So the full, a, full car, a full car length from the street, you can get a... Yes, I want to make sure that I can park my... Other than a stretch limo, you can get a full car in your driveway without opening the garage door. I want to make sure my pickup door. truck fits in there. Mm -hmm. If we... Okay. I have no questions. All right. You want so to pass it to the left. Anything down that so way? So they need two variances: one for the setback, and one to do the accessory structure in front of the house. That's two variances. All right. What's the setback requirement in Wareham Lake Shores? Fifty feet. It's fifty. It's hundred. Hundred. It's an R one thirty. Yeah, it's a hundred. Oh. Right. Okay. So we we have two, two variances. Apparently. The hardship is. I didn't pick up on that. No, but apparently it's the shape of the lot, perfect example yeah, they for got hardship. A legitimate hardship. So I don't see a problem with it. What do you think, Richard? I, I don't have any problems with it. Jake. No problem. I make a motion to close the public hearing, public uh, participation portion of this hearing. Uh, any discussion on that? Here are none. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Richard. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Oppose. Abstain. I aye. make a motion to grant two variances, one for setback and one for moving the house, put, putting the garage, front of the garage, further forward than the front of the house. Okay. And I would add the findings are that it does meet the statutory requirement of Chapter 40A, Section 10 for a variance. So amended. 
So do I have a second on Jim's motion? I'll second that. Second by Jake. All in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. So four one uh, uh, four one zero. Veronica abstain. It carried. You good? Thank you. I just have one question, if if I might. Go ahead. Um, so this process started in March. Is there a reason why we weren't told when we filed for the building permit to begin with that it wasn't going to be approved in the three and a half months that it took to get the denial? Did you did you file the building permit in March? Yes, sir, we did. And how long after they came back and told you you need a... Three and a half months. Before you got your letter. Before we got our letter of denial. That's too, that's unfortunate, but... I don't know, you gotta check with the commissioner because we don't run that department, so we don't know. Uh, the, the, the department is under a lot of uh, uh, demands and they have a lot of people out and uh, it's supposed to be done in 30 days. Uh, right, that's what my understanding is that it's supposed to be 30 days. Yeah, and unfortunately you uh, timed it at the inappropriate time for uh, getting something through quickly. Okay, that's my only if question makes you, and If comment. it makes you feel better, we've got hearings that have been going for a year and a half. I understand so, that. You know? But it, it seems like there should be, if it's, if, if it's a significant... I think if you put it on Facebook, it'll be resolved instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't plan on doing that until I get all the approvals once I get my building Good idea. <laughs> on, on, that, on that subject, through the chair and to our planner, um, is it is it a fact that if they're not um, given a 30-day response that their application is ad actually approved That's by default? Yeah, essentially so. So two months ago, you could have well, just built your garage. Well, I do have an active permit that they did issue to me, and then he told me that it wasn't valid. Just, just, I just wanted into the public record that right. if they don't, if the if that department doesn't act in a timely manner, you just. Thank you. Know. you. I appreciate you your time. have to meet you. zoning requirements. So everybody though. watching tonight knows they can start building stuff without a permit if they don't get a letter within 30 days. <laughs> I appreciate your time. That, just to make it clear, the 30 days, if, say, that's the case, you'll get the building permit. doesn't mean you get zoning waivers. Correct. So for everybody who's listening, if it passes 30 days, you can't just build if you need a variance. So now, once, I, once the 21 days go by... Then I have to go back down and get another permit. Is it going to take another three and a half months for hopefully me to get this not. permit? Well, wait, okay. Hopefully not. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right. So that's done. Grant. First Hartford Realty Group. Special permit variance. Site plan review 3005, 3013 Cranberry Highway. Map 12, lot B and LC1. Rain, car, wash, more vehicles. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on August 11, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in the room 320 of the Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Ware, Mass 02571, to consider petition number 39-21 for a special permit, comma, variance, and site plan review from the requirements of the following code sections. 320, 763.3, 763.4, 1042, 1061.1, 1062.1, 1062.3, and 1520 under the Wareham Zoning Bylaws to First Hartford Realty Company Corporation, care of Douglas A. Troyer, Esquire of 5859 Willard Street, Suite 440, Quincy, Mass., proposing construction of, quote, rain car wash, unquote at 3005-3013 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Mass. Assessors map 12, Watts B and LC1 in the CS Zoning District. All right, very well. This one, Chris Conte will be sitting on that. All right, names and address, gentlemen, and let's hear it. Good morning, Mr. Chair and the rest of the board. My name is Doug Troyer. I represent the applicant, First Realty Corporation. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Sean Cavanaugh from also First Realty. Uh, I also have with me next to me is Curtis Quickzog from uh, VHB Engineering and Matt Keeley from uh, VHB is our traffic engineer as well. Also in the audience is uh, representatives from our developer Aria Hasiotis and Len B. Lee. <clears throat> the uh, denial letter.
Can I have mine back? No. So you haven't done much research yet from what I see here, huh? <laughs> Can't hear you. He needs you to use the microphone, please. Um, Sonia was pointing out that the uh, by using that laptop, it um, it doesn't uh, show the, um, the the plans online. Um, if you can go to share screen and uh, share that, that the plans you put up, then it will show on the web uh, as well. Okay. Screen here. Right, that'll help. That'll do it. <coughs> Is that working? Yeah, that, that, that's on the line. Right. Beautiful. For some reason, the PDF. Do you have Adobe on this uh, laptop? We need to talk about this before we leave. Open up PDFs. Yeah, it should open up PDFs. Yeah, it's not opening it up. Is it, is it grinding? Is it? It's major or minor modification. Okay. Okay. I remember seeing that. Oh. Seeing some action. <laughs> so, all right, let's hear it. No set, sir. Mr. Chair, I'm ready when you are. Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you. Great. Well, briefly, again, my name is Doug Troyer. Um, we're here tonight uh, looking for a special permit from this board for a motor vehicle service car wash use on the Locust. Uh, the property is located at 3005 and 3013 Cranberry Highway, Wareham, Mass. Uh, we're also here tonight. Uh, in connection with seeking a site plan review from the board uh, to construct a car wash facility on the site. The, um, if you look at the plan that's up here, uh, so basically there's two lots that are at issue in this project. The first lot, this lot one that I'm hovering over at, and at the current time, uh, is owned by Cardemus Company, uh, which currently is a developed as a restaurant. Uh, I believe everyone knows this as the 99 restaurant. Uh, currently, it was developed with associated parking, sidewalks, and some utility infrastructure. Uh, the 99 has been closed for some time is, and is kind of a blight uh, building at this point to which we are looking to bring a uh, substantially um, aesthetically pleasing uh, project to, to, the, uh, to the town. The other lot that is at issue is a part of a much larger lot of the Ocean uh, State job lot uh, property that has approximately 17 acres. We are actually in a purchase and sell agreement um, with Ocean State job lot uh, to acquire about 30,000 square feet of their 17.18 acre lot. Um, to basically utilize in connection with our project. It's basically this area here. So, so it's two triangular-shaped pieces being merged into a rectangle. Is that, that is correct? That is correct. And and is it the intention if through the through the chair? Go ahead. Sorry. It's the intention to ultimately merge these two lots into one parcel. In essence, what we will do once we get permitting, uh, we'll proceed with an A and R plan uh, to basically. Uh, combine these lots in order to basically utilize as one They saw a lot property. of talk about one lot having access and the other lot not having access. And yeah, that was in the peer review. I know what I'm draft getting a little bit ahead of you, but. We will get to that. Uh, and, you know, just to kind of cut that off at the pass at this point, we have an access agreement in which we are entering into with Ocean State Job Lot that will be entered into and be able to be provided to this board prior to the closing. But we are currently, uh, we are negotiating an access agreement, and I can show you that plan later as to what that is. I guess where I'm gray is, 
what's the hold up on the on the transfer title well you want to make sure it's a development project so we want to make sure that we're able, want to, be able to, to do what we're looking before you to buy. do exactly so, so once uh, you get the okie dokie if you if in fact you get the okie dokie then that is correct. It's Ocean contingent State, upon Ocean us. State be, will get a, 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 a have a payday. That is correct. It's contingent upon us being able to obtain the, the, the permits from this uh, honorable okay. board. I just wanted to be clear. So I'm going to obviously uh, allow the details to go to my engineering team, but I just want to give you kind of a, a 10,000 foot view overview of what we're looking to do. Uh, we're looking to raise the existing 99 restaurant on the 3013 Cranberry Highway property and construct an automatic car wash using about, uh, the use is going to be consisting of about a 6,800 square foot building with one wash tunnel, self-service vacuum bays, ancillary landscaping improvements, and we have parking up to 28 vehicles which complies with zoning. There's also going to be some stormwater management improvements and utility improvements to support the use of this project. In essence, I'll go through just some real brief renderings which we did provide in the project. Uh, Rain Car Wash will be, the, will, will be the name and the operator of this car wash. Uh, they are a, um, a modern and new car wash facility that's, that, that its business model is designed to deliver the fastest and cleanest car washing experience through a focus on premium locations such as the location which we're looking at today. They have a uh, rubberized conveyor system for easy, stress-free vehicle loading, available pay-by license plate technology, um, and they always have free vacuums for use by the motoring public. As you can see uh, through these renderings, uh, in essence what happens is the vehicles come onto the property, they queue up into this area that I'm at right now, and they have uh, three options. There's a cashier employee that's on site, you have a credit card option, and then for those uh, who wish to have fast passes uh, can come in and uh, regular customers basically can do that. Uh, in essence, they have free vacuum bays for once you exit. Uh, you can basically utilize the vacuum bays. Uh, and as you can see, the interior of the tunnel is a much more modern uh, view than what you typically see uh, for car washes these days. In essence, we believe that this design and this this use will be a benefit to the town and is a uh, tremendous improvement to the site than, than what is there today. We, in essence, with regard to zoning, the lot contains approximately 1.8 acres with a total frontage on Cranberry Highway of 350 feet. The proposed development complies with all other zoning dimensional regulations set forth in the bylaw and the proposed use for motor vehicle service meets the standards for the special permit. I'd like to turn it over to uh, Curtis uh, from our engineering and kind of walk you through some of the specifics of the uh, project plans. You're going to load up that other presentation? I'm getting there. Come on. If I may, do you have a uh Control of the, I'm sorry, a PNS on the other parcel, right? In a packet? No, we have not provided the PNS agreement. I've provided you with an owner's authorization from both uh, okay, from the property owners. From them. Exactly. Okay. I think because we're going through Zoom, it's taking a little bit of time for things to load up, but here we go. And just because I have, I, I'm, I don't know if it was my ears or your um, mask. Yeah. But earlier, when you were speaking, I couldn't understand if you said you had three vacuum cleaners for the public to use. Free. Or free. Free. F free as in they don't cost anything. That, yes, that is correct. Anybody driving by, whether they buy a car wash or not, can come in and vacuum out <laughs> well, I think Well, I think it's basically a service that's provided for having a car wash. You have free. Um, I wish I could get that for you, but I'm closed that's off. That's okay. I'll be anonymous. Um, just, just wanted to make sure I heard the right words. It was yes. free, not free. Okay. Uh, Curtis. Okay, so let's continue. Hi, I'm Curtis Quitsaw. I'm with VHB. I'm a senior project manager in our land development group. And um, I'm, I'd like to walk you through the site plan um, this evening. I'm going to start out by just showing you, first of all, in context where the site is. And this is for the benefit of, uh, uh, of the people who might be listening in on Zoom. Mm -hmm. You want to roll Which it? We, yes, if I may. I'm just yeah, going to roll it on down. That's fine. Okay, so. This is the, it's the, the, uh, the highlighted yellow area in the middle 
uh, of this screen. It's in the job lot plaza right at the si traffic signal across from uh, Dick's Pond. And if, if you want to point this parcel out to the people of Wareham, just refer to it as the place with the free undercarriage car wash that's currently being corrected. <laughs> free vacuums, that car wash. No, the undercarriage car wash. There you go. This is a, this here is a, is a plan that was uh, part of our submittal. This is the uh, project location plan. It just shows some abutters. We've got Taco Bell to the east. We've got Eastern Bank uh, uh, off to the west and we're, we're right in the front of the, the job lot plaza. This is an aerial view of the, uh, the project site itself to give you a, a flavor of what it looks like today if you're not familiar with it. You can see the, um, the 99 building, some, um, some residual parking and uh, landscaping, but the, most of the site is impervious uh, because it's all paved. This is a view of the site from uh, Cranberry Highway looking towards uh, the 99, which is here. And this plan here is what um, uh, Mr. Troyer was explaining in terms of the parcelization. The blue line through the middle is, uh, is the, the, the line between, that's the existing property boundary as it exists today. The green area is what we hope to consolidate to. That area that's up in blue at the top is a, um, a permanent highway easement on registered property. And we actually, we, you've already seen a preview of these, so I'll just skip through these kind of quickly. We wanted to make sure that you, <coughs> you got a sense of what the building looked like before I started talking about the site plan. So I think you've seen these. Um, and we can always come back to them uh, at any time. This slide here is, is a reminder for me to to, to mention that um, you're probably aware that the Cranberry Highway is under construction and is going to be improved. Our site plans um, that you see that we submitted takes into account what the constructed condition will be, which, which included the introduction of a center median and um, uh, a U-turn um, uh, space right, right at the property. Um, our, the, pro the property we're talking about is right down over here. Okay, so uh, on the site plan, first, uh, generally speaking, um, it's, it's fairly clear, I think, that the, the site fronts on uh, Cranberry Highway and that we have access to uh, Cranberry Highway and we'll have access also to that traffic signal and from the plaza behind. Um, the, the building's been situated forward on the site, which puts the parking to the rear and the, the vacuum stations to the rear so that it's uh, somewhat um, uh, buffered and obstructed from the public way. Um, the, the state highway has uh, two driveways planned for the site, one at the location where we're showing a right turn, right, turn, uh, right in, right out driveway configuration, and another one which we're, we are planning uh, to close. Um, we'll be reviewing the geometry of our driveways with DOT in due course. Um, for, so the way the site operates is if, you, if you're approaching, we're, we're expecting that most traffic will probably come in through the, um, through the, the, the right in, right out uh, main driveway. And if you arrive here, you can go straight to the pay stations which are located over here. As, as it was mentioned, there's three pay stations, a manned, um, a, um, a self-service, and then a, a kind of like a fast lane option for uh, certain customers. Um, you'd enter into the tunnel of the, uh, of the car wash on this end, and when you pop out on the, on the far end, when you're, you're done, you can go, you can proceed around and go to the vacuum stations. Um, we have 20 of them down here. You can go there, or you can go to the plaza through either of these driveways that, that go onto the drive aisle of the plaza, or you can head out and, and proceed east on uh, Cranberry Highway. It's not sharing? It's showing the, the menu and not, the, um, not your site plan. So oh, it's check not? The, check the share screen again and see which is, what's showing. There you go. 
There you go. Good, thank you. Do I have to start I'm going to interrupt you again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you again. I'm, I'm looking at the graph or the picture, and I see a lot of red lines with red arrows. I only see one way in. Are you going to let people come in and out off the plaza? Or That's the my next slide. Pardon me? That's my next slide. Your next slide. Yeah, I, um, I just wanted... Okay, so I now the arrows go the other way. A whole bunch of different colored arrows. Uh, so I, I was focusing here with the, 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 okay. what we believe to be will be our primary Why entrance. Why don't we let uh, them finish then? Okay. The most frequently used. Have it. So let's hear it. Hmm. Okay. We won't interrupt you. And then here's what it, here's here's coming from another direction. If you if you make the left at the signal or the right into the site for, at the signal, you can come in through either of the back driveways. You can go either directly to the pay stations or you could go to the vacuum stations first and then proceed to the pay stations and go through the tunnel. Uh, and then so basically the site's very flexible, has all kinds of movements um, for in and out uh, circulation. Uh, on this slide, what I wanted to point out, which I've circled, is uh, just sort of, again, some of the functioning of the site and some of the features. Um, there will be a, um, uh, a floor mat washing station at the uh, outside, at the, corn at the middle of the building, centered on uh, the vacuum cleaner sites. The, the, the site plan incorporates a bailout lane over here, which is a paved lane out for anybody who passes through the, uh, the pay station and for any reason whatsoever chooses not to proceed through the tunnel. Uh, it, it, allows them, it allows them to get out and under any circumstances. We've got a, uh, this is the location here of uh, trash handling where we'll have a, um, an enclosed dumpster pad and, and landscaping uh, screening around it. And then up at the site driveway, there'll be a monument sign. Um, and then the, the, the landscaping um, component of this thing w is really uh, designed to uh, satisfy the objectives of the, uh, the zoning ordinance uh, to, and to complement but not hide the car wash building because we, we think it's, uh, it's a great looking building. The, uh, the proposed new trees that are planted are around the exterior, around the perimeter help frame the, the site. Uh, and add to the buffer. We're, we're supplementing some trees that are along our, our sidelines. Um, and then along the front, we've got, um, we've got uh, planting, uh, planting beds of shrubs, and mounded shrubs and, and perennials and grasses up against the building. Um, and the, the, the palette of the plants is a mix of uh, native shade and evergreen trees, shrubs and grasses um, for hardiness, diversity, and um, visual interest during all seasons. Um, and then, of course, I, I didn't want to show, I could show you utilities, but that's pretty boring. But uh, what I'd like to say about utilities in general is there's utilities going to this um, building to service it. There'll be electric, gas, water, sewer. Um, we, um, the, the washing process will recirculate and reuse water. So it's about 50% of the water consumption saving. The overall increase to the sewer system is about 3,000 gallons per day. And we've been to the, the, the sewer department, <coughs> met with them, and I uh, believe in your packet you'll see a, um, a letter saying that they accept the, um, <coughs> the additional flows. Um, so nothing really remarkable to talk about relative to utilities. Um, the location of the recycling tanks will be under the pavement at the location of this, this box here. And the, what, what I'd like to talk about now is a little bit uh, about uh, the stormwater management and drainage system. The, the building is, will be higher on the site than the existing um, 99, which is situated up here. Uh, that's in part because of the way we have to grade the site in order to manage stormwater, but also because the, um, the construction of uh, Cranberry Highway is adding a little bit of fill in this area. Um, so our grading will shed the water away from the building to the outside perimeter of the pavements 
where it will be collected and directed through openings in the curbs at these red arrows that you see around. And these are all entry points into shallow infiltration bioretention swales where the water will be treated and infiltrated uh, into the ground. The, the, the site today basically has not, does not have these types of controls and we have to introduce them to satisfy the state standards for <coughs> stormwater management. There's 10 standards and we're um, required to meet them, um, uh, meet some of them uh, under all circumstances and some of them we're allowed to meet to the extent practicable. And that, that's the state recognizing that um, in some instances uh, you've got constraining uh, conditions that don't allow you to fully comply. And in, in, in fact, that's the situation here. We've got great soils, good sands for um, infiltrating the, the stormwater, uh, but the, the groundwater is relatively high. And so in order to, for us to satisfy um, certain separation requirements, we, we can't really use traditional catch basins with the deep sumps to do some pretreatment. So. We, we fall a little short on that, but we've done, we believe we've done the best that, uh, that we can do. We understand the peer reviewer will be looking at, at our report and we anticipate um, that they will reach uh, the same conclusions we did and we'll work with them cooperatively to make sure that their comments are addressed. Um, but uh, the, the, the stormwater system will reduce overall the amount of runoff from that site that you see today so it's because of the introduction of the infiltration and because of that it's going to reduce some of the flooding uh, frequency that you see uh, out on cranberry highway which is also being addressed uh, in large part by the um, the state's contract um, but we're not contributing um, we're, we're reducing our flows to it so we're actually helping the situation so it's a benefit um, and with that i think uh, I've covered what I needed to say, and I'd like to pass it along to, to Matt to talk about traffic. All right, could if we you... may have some questions before you pass to Matt. Sure. Now we could ask, I get a, uh, so we just kind of, about the site before we go down. I get a couple of questions. On the stormwater management, you're saying you want to reduce the, the, like the water run off to the highway. You have to contain it all. It's not, you're not, you can't just reduce it. On the stormwater management, you have to contain it all. You know that. It right? is contained. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys had a chance to do a perk test at all? Yeah, we we um, we had uh, we had a geotechnical um, engineer do borings and some some testing. Okay. Another question I wanted to ask you: Did this? How many cars you anticipate to get a day there, average or a year, a month? How do you guys how do you classify that per month, per year, per quarter? Actually, Mike is going. Excuse That's me. Mike. Okay, we'll Matt to is going to get, get into all of that information right, for you we'll next. Get to that. And another thing, uh, did you start a 53G account? Yes, we have. We already did funded it, and okay. it's all been set. All right, very good. And any board member would like to ask a question before we go to the detail of the cars on site? Anything? No. Uh, just that you'll get around to show the renderings again, so that people online can see them. Say it again. The renderings of the elevations of the building. Yeah, give me a second. So the people online can see them as well. I, um, yeah, either one. Exactly. Thank you. Anytime. Are these renderings in the packet? Is yes, they are. They are. They're in uh, the attachment five <coughs> uh, to my memorandum. Oh, okay, thank you. And with that, I'll turn it over to Matt. Thanks. Uh, again, my name is Matt Keeley. I'm a traffic engineer with VHB. What I'd like to do is just briefly walk you through the process we went through to prepare our traffic study. 
Uh, so the study area for our study uh, included the intersection of Route 6 at the Ocean State Plaza driveway um, and Route 6 at our proposed site driveway. Um, as part of our condi existing conditions evaluation, we collected traffic volumes, crash history, and we did capacity analysis at each of those intersections to establish our baseline conditions. Um, as part of our future conditions uh, evaluation, we uh, projected future traffic out to 2028, which is a seven-year projection uh, in accordance with MassDOT standards. Uh, we used a traffic growth rate of 1% per year, even though traffic isn't really growing um, <laughs> at this time. Uh, it's just standard to be a little bit conservative and use a, a, a background growth rate. Um, we conducted trip generation projections, which I'll get into in a second, um, and then added those trip generation projections uh, to our no-build traffic volumes to establish our build condition. Then we did capacity analysis comparing. We do the uh, share screen again to, to um, it apparently sets up a different um, page yeah. when it gets. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, no, that's, so yeah. it's not going to the screen, it's going to the window. There you go. Thank you. Anytime. So then we do capacity analysis comparing our no build and build conditions and that allows us to identify um, any traffic impacts uh, to operations. So as I mentioned earlier, as far as trip generation goes, uh, typically it's standard procedure for traffic uh, studies to include projections based on the Institute of Transportation Engineers trip generation manual. Uh, the ITE trip gen manual is essentially a, a national database of traffic counts at various land uses. Um, in this case, one of the land uses within the manual is automated car wash. So the column on the, on the left there is um, the ITE projections. Uh, so based on the size of the, the, the car wash and the, the one tunnel, um, the ITE projections show a total of 78 vehicles during the uh, weekday PM peak hour and 41 vehicles during the Saturday midday peak hour. Now in consultation with, with our, our client, um, they, through anecdotal information and, and information they have for other uh, projects, um, they thought that those numbers uh, should actually be a little bit higher. Uh, they thought it should average around 100 vehicles uh, during the peak hours. Uh, so just to provide a conservative assessment as part of our study, we went ahead and used those numbers um, in our traffic study. So again, as I mentioned, uh, we did capacity analysis for existing conditions, no build and build. The results of the analysis uh, showed no drops in intersection level of service, which is how we evaluate the operations. Um, and that just basically indicates that there's a minimal impact associated with the proposed project. Uh, one other thing we wanted to touch on was vehicle queuing. Um, we feel that the site plan has adequate vehicle storage. Um, through information provided by the applicant, um, you know, they were thinking we should be preparing for an average vehicle queue of about seven vehicles. Uh, but as you can see with the storage here in the three lanes, this, um, this graph is actually showing 25 vehicle storage. So we just wanted to demonstrate that even with, you know, the highest vehicle queues, we aren't going to be queuing traffic back up onto Route 6 that there's adequate storage to contain them on site. And kind of summing up and obviously turn it over to questions uh, for the board. Um, it's our position that the property will undergo a, a significant aesthetic upgrade and building design and improvements, uh, which are beneficial to the town, the surrounding neighborhood, and the community at large. Uh, the project will eliminate the current status quo of having a site with a blighted restaurant structure which has remained vacant for a number of years along an important commercial corridor in the town. The use of the site as an automatic car wash will not have any adverse effects which overbalance its beneficial effects for either the neighborhood or the town in view of the particular characteristics of the site and the proposal in the relation to the site. We're obviously before this board uh, seeking a grant of both the special permit and the site plan and uh, welcome any questions that the board may have at this time. All right, very well. Uh, this is how kind of we do it here. I guess we gotta go step by step. It seems you have a lot of variances you wanna, you want the board to grant. The good news about that is uh, we actually received the denial letter and we were able to rectify every single one of those in our submitted plans. Uh, there are no variances being requested because we, the plans in which we have submitted to this board and as outlined in my memorandum, we have satisfied all of the areas okay. that the building commissioner has identified. That's good. Okay, usually it, it pro we, we will run it by the board and the, with the public and stuff, but usually a project like this we get as much info as we can. Our engineer would go to work, come back, 
negotiate with you, come back with us with some things. He has a problem. We see some input from the public. We see how it goes. Uh, also, I had a letter from uh, uh, local attorney Bob Perry. He's presenting uh, Mr. He will be appearing on behalf of Mr. Stephen McDonald and others in opposition. The petitioner request uh, is Mr. Perry here. I guess he. I don't think you can see me anymore, but can you hear me, Nazi? He's on, He's on Zoom. Zoom. Ah. Oh, you're here. Hi, hey, Councillor. How are you? That's why we can't see him. Okay, very well. Okay, so Mr. Perry is present. So we're going to start with the board questions, and uh, we're going to start with Mr. Conti. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Bob, can you hear uh, Bob Perry on the, on the, the, the uh, video? All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's start with Chris. Um, I, don't have too, I don't have any questions right now. I'm glad to hear that you um, are not asking for all those variances that the um, commissioner has listed here on, on his <coughs> denial letter. Um, there's a lot to review here. I, I think I need to look it over more. I don't have any questions right now. All right. We're eventually going to need a letter from him saying you're not, you're not need of any variance, okay? Because we don't have that from him, from the commissioner. All right. So, Veronica. I just need time to review. Jimmy. I'm all set. Right now. Jake. Uh, nothing at this time. All right. Rich. Nothing at this time, sir. All right. We go in the public. Who's in here in favor of this project? Favor, not against. I hear none. Okay, let's go for against. Who's here would like to speak first? I hear none. I guess it's Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry, do you hear us? I, have, I want to speak in opposition to this. Yes. I guess you're the one. Can I get him back? If you put your microphone close to the speaker. Go ahead. We, I can hear you, Mr. Perry. Bob, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Right. So you're here just... Yes, it's we your turn. We can hear you. You know, I'm sitting here right now looking at the rendering of this rain car wash. And, and you know what strikes me? There's a couple of things they have from my first reading of this package. I feel like I'm in Disney World with the newest attraction. To me, this is a horrible example of an attractive nuisance. We're going to spend $100 million by the time we're done, at least, to fix up Cranberry Highway to make it safer for all of us. And this car wash, looking at it, is going to attract everybody's attention. And that's the intent of to attract everybody's attention. So they see it's there, and hopefully they go in and get that car wash there. It's a danger. We're going to have more collisions instead of less after completing Cranberry Highway because people are going to go buy this thing. They're going to be rubbernecking and they're gonna have a serious problem. I think in and of itself, the, the fact that they're drawing attention, this big glass fronted thing, 150 feet long, parallel to Cranberry Highway, being viewed from Cranberry Highway, in and of itself is violative of items one, two, three, and probably five of 1461. Now, I don't know where you stand on variances. I, I understood to begin with they needed a half a dozen variances Later on, I understood maybe they were going to change their process. They didn't need variance, but now I think I'm hearing variances are required. If they need variances for anything, then I don't think you can grant the special permit because I think number six in uh, 1461 prohibits that. I think the project has to, in all respects, conform to the zoning bylaws. Now, I don't know if they're seeking variances or not seeking variances. I'm only going by what I heard tonight and what I originally read on this thing. And I, I've read this big package three or four times already. I, I think this would be a horrible thing to allow, as it is, in that it would cause many, many problems for the community that we are trying to avoid by spending this hundred plus million dollars on fixing up Cranberry Highway. Right now we've got a contract out there for, what, about $29 million? Very little doubt at this point that's going to double. In addition to that, the, the takings are immense. I don't even know what the total cost of the takings are. But I know that in addition to that, there are a number of cases pending 
where people are looking to increase the money that's been offered, and I expect it's going to happen. So we're going to spend a fortune and then counter it all in that area by permitting this gaudy attraction here that is better situated, as I say, down in Disney World than here on Cranberry Highway where it's going to cause the troubles it's going to cause. When you drive by there and you see these cars going through that, that uh, glass-fronted car wash, it's going to be worse than any possible flashing sign that anybody might want to put up. And of course, we don't want flashing signs there. Anyway. Mr. Perry, Mr. So Perry. Mr. Perry, I want to interrupt you. We, Mr. Perry. Yes. Y yes. Uh, we. Uh, I didn't hear. I. I didn't think I heard it right the first time. But we can't have vulgar language in public hearings. If that's going to continue, I'm going to have to, sh uh, like, shut your microphone off. I'm so. Sorry, Nazi, I didn't really get what you said. You. You said twice the F word. You can't say it publicly, please. Can be in a public hearing. No, we accept this language. So please watch the language. If that's the, if it's gonna continue, that's twice you said it. I said anything, but if I did, I apologize. All right, very well. Just watch it, please. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I mean, this is really upsetting to think of something that garish going there on Cranberry Highway to attract the motorist attention, which is obviously the intent, and it, it should not be allowed. It's not. It's violative of 1461. And that's without considering any variances that might have to be issued. Because what's your issue variances? 1461's out the window. So I'm totally in opposition to this, as are all of my clients. All right, very well. As I said before, we're going to need a letter from the commissioner showing that the variance has been satisfied, there's no variances needed, then we'll deal with them after. Uh, for right now, we're going to need strictly with a special permit. We're just going to take the words for it. And until next hearing, we'll just clarify it with the commission that there's no variances needed. Then they have to meet the statute. That being said, uh, anyone in the audience want to speak against this project? Are these gentlemen with you here? All of you? Okay. All right. I just don't want somebody sitting for something else here. All right. Very good. Okay, that being said, uh, what's the wishes of the board? Uh, Charlie, you, you have any input without, did you look at the plans? Did you have a chance to look at them? Uh, well, I've, I sent my initial report in, which I assume you got a copy of. Okay. I, I saw it. It's when, when did you send it? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Within, within uh, the last Because I only, I only got hours. the authorization to go ahead and do things the end of the week. So you've got a partial report. And as I suggested, I will be looking at the plan with respect to the stormwater. Also, I did get the memorandum that suggests that the variances are not needed. So I will take a look at each one of those sections and then compare that to the site plan and uh, we'll render a report. Uh, as I said in my letter, I'll have it ready for the next public hearing, whenever that may be. Um, I do want to make one point with respect to the plan, though. Um, the property is, is separated into two pieces. One, because it's an existing lot where the old Lobster Bowl or 99 restaurant is, and that's land-courted property. The OSJ property is not land-courted. So if they separate out a section of the OSJ property and prevent it to the planning board as an ARNR plan, I don't believe that the planning board would have any issues with um, endorsing that plan. But it will not necessarily merge with the land courted piece because the land court, until you modify the certificate of title through a survey and a change of that plan, will forever and a day exist as a separate lot. So drawing a plan that goes around the whole thing and sort of drawing a dash line through the middle of it uh, really does nothing. I talked about this with the building um, inspector uh, and uh, he says that he does not require nor is he obligated to require that that lot line be merged. It's understood that it will be one parcel for building purposes. Correct. But it will have to remain that way only because half of the property is registered and half isn't. So there'll be a separate certificate of title 
that will go to the new owner and there'll be a separate deed which will go to the new owner for the piece they get from OSJ. So Correct. don't think that you're going to see a plan with no line down through the middle. It, it'll stay there. That <laughs> it I, I totally understand. It's a perfect example, just like you see All right. lots um, in Shangala with like five lots. Com they're not really combined, but they're together what, the, to make a buildable lot. The lines are there, but if the same ownership, it doesn't matter. That's correct. Uh, just a couple of comments with respect to the plan. Um, some mention was made of an 11-foot driveway called a bailout lane. Um, I don't know whether they've had a chance to go to the fire department and review that, but I don't think 11 feet is going to be wide enough to satisfy them. Uh, what lane? They, which lane? The bailout lane. It's a narrow 11-foot lane, which is on the side, which is parallel with the entrance into the old Walmart site. Right. Um, it may have to be a little bit wider so that they can make the turn. Um, and also, they need to verify the height of clearance of where they go in to pay the fees and so forth to be sure that uh, if apparatus has to go around that route, they're not going to hit that. So I'm not sure what the height is, but again, they should verify that. The, the bailout lane, so if somebody changed their mind of washing a car so they could leave? I know, but it may That's be the that one? the fire department might use that also, right. and it just okay. may need to be a little wider. I don't think it'll impact things. Um, what do you suggest, 14 feet, 16, or do you want the fire department to make that call? Um, they should be the ones to look at it. My okay. recommendation would be 15 feet uh, with appropriate radii so that you can get around there without actually running on the grass. Yeah. Um, the only other thing with respect to the, the drainage that I will take a look at is that it was mentioned that the... Uh, recycling tanks are going to be placed under the pavement and that they've already done testing to show that the groundwater is high. So hopefully they will have done enough uh, in terms of determining whether or not there is any flotation that will occur to that tank should they empty it if it happens to be that it's buoyant because of the height of the groundwater. So those calculations perhaps should be done or they should be checked so that you're not going to have that tank popping out of the ground and, and destroying the pavement. Um, and that's all I really can talk to tonight, Mr. Chairman, because I haven't had a chance to review the rest of the plan. So you're saying if these tanks get emptied, they might float, they might push up? Absolutely. Um, they could, depending on the size of the tank and the amount of water that comes up along the sides. It could actually make it float. Yeah. So the way I, I've seen this happen, you so you probably that? best bet you got to design it on the way the bottom concrete part, part is heavier than the volume. I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll handle it through their civil office. I have no problem with that. I'm just raising the issue and something I'll be looking for. Yeah, I've seen that. All right. So what do you guys think? Uh, one thing I would like to know is uh, you indicated that a letter had been submitted by Mr. Perry. It, it was a letter. He just emailed it to the board and myself not too long ago. His, his letter was simply making sure that he got the opportunity to speak. Oh, that's fine. In my understanding, he represents uh, Mr. McDonald, who owns the car wash just down from us, actually. I think that's and, what you indicated. Others. We don't and know. And others. OK. I don't know. He, the All right. Thank you very much. OK. Um, I do have a couple questions, if I might. Go ahead. The interior of the car wash. Well, actually, let me start with what are the operating hours? Yeah, they're going to be uh, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So will the interior of the car wash be illuminated? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Ronnie, I, uh, I didn't hear you well. What did you say? I'm asking about the illumination of the interior of the car wash. Ah, because if it's to be illuminated, yeah. Right. Yes, it will, yes, it right. will be. Thank just, you. I just want to have an idea of people driving by, how much light is going to be coming from the, the car wash itself. Right, understood, understood. Um, and then uh, any of the signs lit? Um, I don't recall the sign on the building, right? Probably. Sean. Yeah, the there is there is some, yeah, we submitted a, uh, there is a sign package that has been submitted as well okay. that specifically identifies okay, the yeah, illumination small. and all of that on those signs. Yeah. Is it in here? Okay. If you don't, I got one right here okay. for you. Well, I'm sure they're going to have little signs everywhere, which is, uh, if, if it's by the book, it's by the book. If it needs a variance, we'll deal with it. There's one freestanding sign, and then there's two uh, main signs on the building themselves. That's uh, I mean, what we have. Did you check the guideline of our signs? Does it meet the My guide? My understanding and what we have submitted complies with, with uh, chapter, I think it's section 11 or chapter 11 of your, uh, of your okay. bylaws. All right. Does it conform to the new, uh, the new uh, Article 11 as well? 
When did the new article go into effect? Uh, it hasn't gone into effect now. It was voted on by town meeting in uh, April uh, or uh, what was that? When was town meeting? May? Yeah, um, May. I haven't heard the attorney general's uh, review of it yet, though, but uh, uh, there was a, a substantial change in the, in, this, in the signed bylaw. If I could get a copy of that, we'll, uh, between now and the next hearing, basically verify that uh, we are in compliance with that as well. But I wasn't aware that we were... Uh, there was a new sign by law, uh, but we will uh, take a look at that if, you, if I can get a copy of that. I can reach out Please to uh, yeah. your assistant and, and get a copy and review that between now and the next hearing. Building okay. inspectors am, I, am I reading this I have another question as well. What's that? This I have another question as well. Uh, you said that the yes. cars go through at about three minutes each. I don't know if we said that. That's a bit, that is correct. Yeah. So that, that means in an hour you get about 20 cars going sharing. through the, uh, the car wash. Um, and you can stack 25 at the, uh, at the queue. Yes. Uh, but you said that there's 100 cars that are uh, possible for, at the peak hour oh, on site. Um, what happens with the other 55 cars? Where do they go? Mm -mm. I want to let Matt answer that one. This is the just to clarify, the 100 is 100 trips, so it's 50 cars in, 50 cars out. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So you worry about the queue, at the Ken? Yeah, just make sure the queue is large enough, and it appears that it would be in that case. So this is two talking. tunnels? One tunnel. One tunnel, and it, how many cars can be inside? I, don't, I thought they said it could be doing One behind the other? Three minutes. No, no, how many together, like? How many it fits the how, one how goes long? at a time. On one goes at a time. What? One one vehicle at a time. at a time. I understand this. But yes. The tunnel is 138 feet. 150 so feet. So you could have inside almost uh, six cars, seven cars at least, right? That is correct. Okay. I want to point out that the fire department letter is online now. I received that before tonight's hearing, and we intend to follow up to have discussions. Uh, yeah, yeah. With uh, in connection with that with that letter. Good. Everybody. Um, who was the gentleman who said only one car goes through the car wash at a time? Who's who's speaking? Who, yeah, Repeat who's, the question. Hello. Uh, who's who's? Uh, we just need name for the record. Name and address for the record. Excuse me. Name and address for the record. Who's speaking? Yeah, this is this is Steve McDonald. Yep. Yeah. I have several questions. Your address, please, for the record. Excuse me? Your address for the record. 3083 Cranberry Highway. Okay, go ahead, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. So there was a general, somebody posed a question about how many cars go through the car wash at one time. And somebody on the uh, representing of rain said one. One vehicle in, in response to whether or not there was yes. multiple lanes. If I may, if I may, let Mr. McDonald finish and then you could answer. Go ahead. There's no arguing back and forth to, the, to who is speaking. Go ahead, Steve. There was a point that was made that one car goes through the car wash at a time. Yeah. That is, that is simply not true. Okay. It is, it is, it is let's state okay. for the record, it's 150 feet. The average car length is 20 feet. That means there can be just about eight cars in the car wash at one time, number one. Number two, I think we should see the, not, the equipment that is in this car wash, because with a glass building, there's gonna be nothing but flashing lights that are gonna further attract people's attentions. And I don't know if anybody's read the Mass Highway Report that was in this uh, packet here, but the number one cause of accident, not cause, the number one level of accidents on the highway or rear ends. So I would like to ask how this car wash won't draw attention and the lights that are flashing inside of it won't cause attention and people won't rubberneck and hit one another and cause further rear end accidents. So I think we should see a schematical plan of what lights and electrical lights are in this car wash. Because I know there's no flashing lights permitted on Cranberry Highway. So that's one. Two, the traffic report from the engineer states that at peak, there's only 50 cars that go through this car wash in an hour. So that designates 100 trips, 50 in, 50 out. However, 
if you ask the manufacturer how many cars this car wash is built handled per hour, they will tell you it's 150 to 200 cars an hour. That's industry fact. They have 26 vacuums, or was it 20? 20. It was uh, 20 stations. They have minimal parking. Are you actually going to say that there's only 50 trips that are in and out and peak? And oh, by the way, if anybody's been past the car wash that was down, that's down on Cranberry Highway, they'll tell you on Saturday it's the busiest day of the week. But this doesn't show it's the busiest day of the week, it shows the weekday is. So I would tell you that most of the information in here is not actually factual. It's taken out of books as opposed to factual studies that have been commissioned. In addition to that, there's a traffic light 200 feet or so up. How is it that all these cars are going to exit when people are stopping at a light and speeding up? and there's going to be that kind of traffic, is that going to cause more accidents? Okay, you're good, Mr. McDonald's, sir. And I'd like to say this as well. Um, I think it was Ken Buckland made a joke that Dick's Pond uh, provides a free undercarriage wash when it rains up. That was Jim's uh, the joke. The engineers here today, I believe the engineer's name was Curtis, says that... Um, it will help with some of the storm water, but it won't deteriorate the, the flooding. And this property uh, was abandoned by 99 because of the flooding. My guess is with the oil, with the gas and the oil traps, grease traps, there may be some environmental hazardous waste on this property from all the flooding that's taken place. And now you're going to have more flooding Maybe it'll be reduced. Sounds like it will. Sounds like there's also going to be quite a bit of gravel filled here to bring the lot up to a level. But what's happening on an environmental basis to Dick's Pond? All right. Very well, Mr. McDonald's. Now, sir, you, could, you have your floor. Any of those studies have been done. Let the gentleman answer and we get back to you. Uh, we've, well, I think they should answer for this town, not just for me. Yeah, yeah, correct. He's going to answer the question. All right. Which is, um, 20 some odd years ago, there was a glass building just like this in the um, old Walmart parking lot, as you may all recall. And everybody talked about how much of an eyesore it was. Are we actually going to have a billionaire build yet another building in? This town that's a glass building that doesn't confide with the architectural norms of the community. All right, you all set, Mr. McDonald? Okay, sir, you have the floor. Yeah, just real briefly. Um, we've submitted our reports. Uh, we are very um, uh, interested in, in speaking with uh, the town's peer review engineer uh, to discuss the traffic concerns, to discuss the stormwater concerns, to, construct, to discuss the uh, project concerns. Uh, I respect Mr. McDonald's uh, statements, uh, but I do want it to be known that this is a, uh, this is a competitor uh, who owns Soft Touch, which is down the road from us. Uh, if he has reports and expert reports and things along those lines, that's his position. We submitted ours. Uh, you, we've, uh, the town has its own engineer that is going to be reviewing those, and we are more than happy to discuss any of those all those concerns that the experts have basically talked about. And I thank you. You thank you for your sure, time. I'll show you. I'll show La you Steve, Mr. McDonald, St sir, <coughs> sir, <coughs> sir, you have to have the floor to speak. You can't just jump in. If you give me a minute. I have, give you the floor. Charlie, is this going to go to conservation? I'm, I'm yes. pretty sure, right? Yes, the entire project is in a flood zone, AE flood zone. Okay, and so what's the elevation there, 11, 12? 14. Do you ha they have 14? That's, that's what the minimum flood elevation is for that mapped area. I don't uh, know what the grade of the ground is yet. I think they grade 11 or 12. They still, they still have to go there because it's mapped that way. Right. Um, and I'll be taking a look at the grading that they propose. Um, I think it was Mr. Uh, Quitzel maybe he may have suggested that uh, Mass Highway is raising the grade in this area. I don't know how much that is, 
if he knows, maybe he'd be willing to share it. Uh, we'll see whether or not it ought to, it uh, uh, sheds any light on it after I've had a chance to review it. But I, I haven't I, studied that I at all I think that did raise it a little bit. They're going to have to for the water. Yes, sir. Uh, in response to that, uh, we actually have uh, had discussions with the ComCom uh, department and the agent uh, indicated to us that we only need to file a notice of intent. Um, and a request for applicable. need to file a notice of intent. You know better than yeah, I do. We, th this is Kirk Woods. Uh, um, we've met with the, or we had discussions with the CONCOM agent yes. who recommended that we, uh, we file um, like an RDA, a request for determination of applicability. We may I not think you're going to need a notice of intent. File, There's we, no way RDA will yeah, fly. We may not be able to, we may not need to file a, a full notice of intent. If you're in the flood zone, I think you'll have well, to. But he, that's his call. I'm not going to. Except, that, it, except that it's. The flood zone yeah. Too. Except so that it's, it's coastal flooding. It's the, uh, it's Mr. Perry, let me. Uh, you'll have, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the mic. Just give me a minute. We let Mr. Pichet decide this. This is his board. And I mean, that's his call, not ours anyway. So, Mr. Perry, go ahead. What do you like to say? Mr. Perry. Yes, I, I just said whether they have to go before conservation depends on two things. One, they don't. That's the Wetlands Act, obviously, because they're not within 100 feet of the uh, pond. However, that property may or may not be within the flood zone, and David wasn't sure of that. As a matter of fact, that was a question we were reserving for Mr. Rowley. All right, Mr. McDonald, do you want to say something while I'm looking at these plans? Mr. Chairman, I checked on that with the FEMA flood maps that are on uh, line with the town. Yeah. There's no question about what they're in the flood zone of AE 14. Okay, and you guys get, a, 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 like you, your proposed grade is like 11, 12, so you're definitely going to have to file. Was it RDA or notes of intent? I don't know. That's, that's Mr. Pichette's call. All right, so... Uh, Mr. McDonald, do you want to say something? Yeah, I'm curious how it's not in a flood zone when we all know when it rains or snow melts, both the 99 restaurant and the highway are imperviously flooded right to the pond. So if it's not in a flood zone, then it would seem that somebody would actually need to look at it and maybe reclassify it because, um, as, as somebody stated, and as we all have had, free undercarriage washes, mm -hmm. I thought that was actually quite plain and, and quite funny, but an actual true statement. And the fact that we would spend as much money on this highway to redo it and to continue that issue um, is, is quite problematic. Mr. McDonald. M Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. McDonald, um, perhaps you weren't listening when the engineer stated that this, is, in fact, is in the flood zone. So what's your point? Oh, I didn't hear that, sir. Very important to listen before you speak. Yeah, that's true. All right, Steve, let's, uh, it is in the flood zone. They're going to have to go to conservation. Let conservation do their work. We do our thing. Uh, as I understand, the highway did, Mr. Sample knows somebody, they did raise it a foot over there. They raised the highway a foot. So we all, we all know there's a flooding issue. Hopefully, the state, with all the money they spent, they address this issue. And hopefully, with your plans, you will contain all your water with the storm water management. I think 100 years, or was it designed for 100? Mm -hmm. You have to contain everything, uh, the 2 and the 10, and then you cannot exceed what normally comes off the lot for the 100 year storm. Okay. And you cannot impact properties off site by right. the 100 year storm. Okay. So if they're saying they contain it, they're that much better off. But again, I have to look at it. I right, seen it. exactly. So this we're going to have to sort out as we go. May I ask another question, please? Yeah, please address Chairman, because we, I'm, I hate to say this, I, I, I don't need friends. <laughs> so uh, just address me as the Chair, please. That would be fine, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a yes. couple other questions. One, one was stated by the, count, by the rain attorney, which is I am, a, uh, I am a business owner that's competitive to this. And yet, while I may be a business owner that is competitive to this, you know, 
Um, the issues here are, are vastly different than competitive issues. I have built two car washes in this town, and I will remind you that one of those has gone out of business because there wasn't enough business to support it, which is now a used car dealership. And my question is, when they say that this is a great benefit to the town, is it a great benefit for the town? Is this proper town planning to have a car wash a mile from a car wash? People may eat three plus times a day and you can have a lot of fast foods. But if we're actually planning, are we, are we taking one eyesore and creating yet another? Is this, is this good planning from that standpoint, I ask? And I guess it's a bit of a rhetorical question, but I think the point is well taken. All right. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. It, it is a good point. Uh, as Mr. McDonald said, I know a restaurant people would try different food, go eat, but why? I mean, it is a free business country. You do what you want. But why would you want to do it over there? For instance, why didn't you pick West Wayham? You probably can pick up a better business. I mean, we do it in town as well. I mean, as a, as a responsibility of a board, as a special permit granting we do have also to f do a findings that you're not detrimental to the neighborhood i don't know if you call detrimental who knows maybe put the other gentleman out of business or not but i don't know it's the case we'll we'll see what the legality of it however why would you it's a curiosity i mean you do it you could do it next door to him that's your business but why would you want to do it there not somewhere else i mean was there a like strategy you think the market can handle it and tr honest, honestly and truly, so personally, I think one of you is going to go out of business because they ain't much, that much, unless you guys know something, we don't know. But it's uh, because that gentleman, he was, he was right. There was another car wash that closed down down the street right next to you across from Sonoco. Just curiosity, why, why you think that location is so important? Do you, do you have st strategy, statistics? Uh, what do you think? Give me a second. You don't have to tell us if you don't want to, just curious. One of the reasons is the, uh, the amount of traffic that drives by that site. There's a, a high volume. What is the, the volume in the street, the existing volume? Uh, I don't know what to tell it's, it's substantial, though. And that's one of the reasons to, the, the drive by uh, traffic that could pull in and use the facility. Uh, sir, your name and address? Yes, uh, my name is Ari Hasiotis. I know that's a mouthful. Uh, I am the principal for this project. I reside in uh, the Framingham area, but I'm the developer of this project. And as to your question, uh, Mr. Chairman, around why this location, um, my background is in retail, and um, I operated hundreds of retail stores quite successfully across the country. And I look at the car wash business as one that's underserved for consumers. So typically the facilities are poorly maintained, dirty, not well invested. Uh, the service is poor. The speed of the transaction is poor. The quality of the wash is poor. And often the facilities are poorly located. In this instance, we have all of the opposites of those. We have a very attractive facility, very well lit facility with completely free vacuums for the motoring public, whether they choose to wash their vehicle or not. The wash process is infinitely faster. The wash quality, infinitely better. The service level will be infinitely better. This will be manned, uh, I should say, staffed by several folks to make sure the facility is kept clean and neat. Um, at the end of the day, this is a prime retail corridor. It's on the out parcel of a grocery store uh, and some other retailers, as you know. In this particular part of the Cranberry Highway, we're, we're choosing to locate uh, on a far corner of a light, provides for great ingress and egress into the site. The, the site is very visible from both directions, accessible from both directions. Uh, and, uh, and we think we will play well off of the traffic, all of the quick serve restaurants and other retail in the area, uh, which is what we really try to target when we look to locate a car wash, where people are able to conveniently access it on their way to or from whatever else they may be doing on a given day. Good, Good explanation. Thank you. It was just a curious question. You're welcome. And before Thank you leave, does any board want to ask the gentleman? I, I, I'm assuming you're the owner, you said. You're the that developer. Is correct. So would somebody like to ask him a question? 
Um, I would just like to make a comment um, because I am in agreement with the chairman and uh, Mr. McDonald in terms of location, but I understand your explanation of the reason that you're locating it there. Um, but I think we also, um, as a board, have to consider the benefit to that location for what's existing and what may become of what's existing when this type of a project comes in, mm -hmm. in terms of putting somebody else or another building or location, one or the other may go out of business. Um, I, I agree, West Wareham, I don't know if you've looked, but there's nothing. So East Wareham has a car wash there that actually I believe is pretty well maintained, clean, well serviced, it's very popular in town. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of town has nothing and neither, I think the closest decent car wash is probably 20 minutes in every direction from West Wareham. Um, and then you have this other car wash that where you want to be that's just right down the road. Um, so that's just my thought on that and this whole project. Um, aside from that, I do have some other questions, but I just wanted to make a comment about that. Yeah, thank you. Just keep in mind, everybody, this, it's a free enterprise, so he could pick and go wherever he wishes. We, you cannot be prejudiced against what, what he does. It, it was just suggestion. So, I mean, he, the man knows what he's doing, and if that's what he wants to do. It's what he wants to do. So, all Mr. right. Mr. Chairman, may I just address one other uh, question that yes. was raised around uh, lighting? Uh, and um, I can tell you that this model uh, that, and the elevations that we've shown is, uh, I can't take credit for having invented it. It's, it's, it's becoming quite popular. Uh, throughout the country uh, as really setting a new standard for car wash. And uh, w this is re in reference to an acrylic roof and some glass along Cranberry Highway. Um, it doesn't create problems anywhere it's located. And, and in fact, the general configuration of this car wash in towns throughout America where they're installed is in the configuration that we're showing with the pay lanes parallel to the street, the building parallel to the street. Uh, in this case, it also happens to create a really good ingress and egress and good circulation uh, in, in the site. Um, so I, I did want to make that point. I mean, there will be some LED lighting. It points down onto the vehicle. It does not point out and project out, uh, out of the wash bay onto the street or onto adjacent uh, property. So these are downward facing LEDs that are on the arches of each of the respective components of the, uh, of the wash equipment. Um, and, uh, and so I, d I did want to make that clear. And then I, I also just briefly wanted to mention on the, and, and I'm sure uh, Kurt will, will address this uh, in due course, but the, we did do a pretty detailed analysis of, uh, of the uh, fire apparatus circulation. And, uh, and I believe, uh, Kurt, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, we are compliant with the uh, requirements under the, I think it's NFP in terms of providing access around the main portions of the building and appropriate clearances, but we can provide anything. I know we submitted some information to the fire department in response to their requ uh, questions about that matter. Correct. Okay. So I just wanted to point a few of those things out. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I have one question before you go. Sir. Please. Um, you seem very well versed on your product knowledge is 90% of the job, so congratulations. But Thank you. My, my question is, I've heard a lot of comment this evening um, regarding flashing lights, and it, I, you know, uh, I've had this image painted of um, Back to the Future and the <laughs> DeLorean going through the car wash and the lights flashing and maybe it'll come out um, with wheels that turn up, I'm not sure, but what's the purpose of all the flashing lights in a car wash, if there are any? Um, I th it's a good question. I think it's, uh, frankly, just creating an experience for the, the guest, as we call them, or the, the, the okay. consumer, uh, where they're, they're, they're going through the different processes in the tunnel. Uh -huh. It could be getting uh, the initial soak or the soap and then the wax and the ceramic uh, treatment and so on and then the drying where we use sometimes again this downward facing led lighting just to de just to delineate different parts of the wash and kind of now you're going through x and now you're going through y and now you're going through z is this flashing at the car or out the out the 
glass window. No, d downward, uh, sir. It's not going to be so clean and so shiny that it's going to reflect off it and <laughs> cause all these accidents that I'm hearing about? Well, I think they will be clean and shiny. Show for the public driving down the highway is what it does. Okay. I'm not sure. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I may yes, speak. Thank you. Um, so I have a little experience at these car washes. I don't know if it's the same exact brand as this, but down south, um, there's many, many car washes just like this. Um, pretty much at every, every grocery store right off the corner. Now they're building uh, very similar car washes. And I've had nothing but great experiences um, using them. And it, it's all the same exact stuff that they have on paper right now. And there's you go down south um, and there's hundreds and hundreds of them and there's no issues at all. Um, and they even have them. Most of them are at uh, four-way intersections leaving, uh, say, a stop and shop or a Publix or, or something like that. And they're, um, they, they work out really nice. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I just Chairman, may I speak again? This is Stephen. Yeah, one second, Mr. McDonald. Uh, let me hear from Mr. Sample, the board member. Go and ahead, and I, I'd just like to put in that I think we uh, authorized a Norea that went in over in West Wayham, which is less than a half a mile away from another Norea. So, I mean, when it comes to this retail or selling anything, I think it's dog eat dog world out there. That's just that, my opinion. That, that, that's what I said. It's free enterprise. All right, Mr. McDonald, go ahead. Mr. McDonald, you're on. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just to, to address this respectfully, competition, it's fine. This isn't, uh, this isn't necessarily about that. This is about town planning. Can I build a, a water, would you commission me and allow me to build a water park across from a water park? We have one. Um, so that's one. Two, when I built my second car wash, the conservation, um, um, department made me put in, I want to say it cost me 12 years ago $40,000 to put in a recharge trench and I had to take all the rainwater. And um, I'm wondering why this one doesn't have to do the same. And as it relates to the flashing lights, you do that to draw attention. They will radiate out of the building. And um, I'm not sure who said they had great experiences in Florida. And they are a great experience. However, I also tried to put up a sign that was a flashing light and told I couldn't do that on Cranberry Highway. So I'm just trying to make sure that um, if you want to have a competitive set, that the competition has to deal with exactly what the present competition or the present establishment has to deal with. So I think it's, uh, it's only in good town keeping. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Well, like I said, I'm sure conservation will have the piece at it. So I'm sure they'll have all the inputs and stuff. Once they go to, ha to a conservation, they're going to have to because they're in the flood zone. Uh, and the other way on lighting. Ken looks like he's got well, cut in the headlights or something. In the lighting aspect of it, we will visit more and more and look at it more and more. This isn't going to happen in a couple of meetings, I'm sure. So. We'll check it out and we'll see what Mr. Rowley comes back with. Go ahead, Ken. What do you want? I, I just wanted to um, get a, a, a zoning compliance uh, review of the parking that's uh, taken away from the job lot uh, parking lot and uh, how that uh, complies to this, uh, on the special permit for that was issued for the job lot facility and uh, uh, what what the uh, the difference would be in. Um, reciprocal parking or whatever is uh, allowed across the, uh, the, the lot lines. Our understanding for Molson State Job Lot is that uh, they have significant excess parking and the area to which they are giving to us will not impact any restrictions, any conditions, any stipulations that are on their existing special permits and the requirement for parking for them. This is excess, substantially excess parking space in an area to which they were able to basically provide to us in this, and that is our understanding. I, have I, I assume that was the case, but I just want it confirmed. And uh, that's, but <laughs> we could definitely take a look at that. But my understanding: uh, Are you asking us to determine what the number of parking is that is uh, required for Elson State Job Lot, and then basically provide you what is uh, left after we take the 
54 spaces in which we're looking to take? Yes, so, so it is in conformance with the uh, permits that have been granted to the, um, to the job lot site. Yeah, the thing is, is they are the seller. It, it basically, it's their permits to which they could be impacted. I will take a look at that uh, information for you, but at the end of the day, that is the seller's issue uh, by doing it to us. And our understanding and our analysis has basically shown us that they have excessive. But again, I will take a look at those numbers and All right. I will Thank take a look at those numbers. If I may, Charlie, don't the, the seller of, the, is it still Tedeschi who owns it? They sold it. Whoever it is. Ocean job State, job lot. Ocean State. If, if, if they get a special permit approved from planning board for a certain amount of parking and they cut a piece, don't they have to go back to planning board to make sure they still comply? Or whoever granted that permit back then, I don't know who that's been there. there were, uh, the zoning board and the planning board both issued variances and special permits for the property okay. at various times. Uh, one of my comments in my letter was that you need to have some verification that they've looked at those to see what impacts there might be on cutting this piece off. Um, I don't know what the impacts would be, and my, my first thought would be what's suggested to you is that it might be impacting uh, Ocean State job lot, not necessarily the piece that they want to sell. but it goes the special permit or the variance runs with the land so whether they give it to someone else or not it still might be uh, valid for the piece that they want to convey but i think it is essential that those documents be looked at to see what restrictions reservations provisions were put in there i i think you should ask the seller i'm sure he has we've when, had those conversations right, when he had his permit it, is, it shows how many parking he's needed and how many he provided if that satisfies the need and the board my understanding is those conversations have been right. conducted and i will i will obtain information so this is very that. important that we will revisit after because absolutely if he cuts himself short with parking, uh, very easy. The, whoever granted that permit can put a cease and desist or call him back for a special, uh, uh, for a public hearing to, re to make his building smaller or whatever, or find out, find more parking. All right. They, will, they, I, got, they I, got a big homework to do, so go ahead. I just have one um, question regarding the size of your sign that's on the building. Um, I believe our bylaw permits a 40 square foot sign and you have 70 square feet on your signs that are attached to your building. Your freestanding is 90 and 120 is allowed. So that looks okay. But the ones that are attached to the building, I don't believe meet our bylaw, but Mr. Buckland, if you could. The pylon you mean? Excuse me? The freestanding sign? No, the signs that are attached to the building. Okay, all right. I think they go according to the size of the building. That's so. correct. It's by the linear length, the uh, number of feet of the building itself that uh, allows a, a certain size uh, signage. Can you direct me to that, Ken? Uh, it's on page 92 of the, um, of the zoning bylaws. I think it's 20% of the length. Under uh, section 1138. What page does it? Uh, 92. There's a formula for it, so I'm sure. And the area of the sign goes up to a maximum of 75 square feet. So if it's, yeah, if it's over 100 square feet, the th length of the building, maximum of 75 square feet. Isn't that something that the building commissioner looks at yeah. when he p puts out his letter and that wouldn't be, that so be on the list of variances necessary? Right. So we don't have to worry. We'll wait what he says. Okay, I'm just going to get some uh, clarification. Out of curiosity, that's your answer. All right, good. What else would you like to send these gentlemen with? Charlie, any comments for these gentlemen? Do you want to exchange numbers maybe and emails, hopefully? Um, I've, I've got documentation that I can email back and forth. Uh, just, a, just a comment um, that back when we had a pre-filing meeting, this goes back a number of months, I brought up the color as an issue, that it looked pretty, pretty vivid if there was any way to tone that down a little bit so it didn't stand out and look like a, uh, a gigantic uh, flash in the sky 
as opposed to something that was a little more, more subdued. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd asked at that time that they take a look at the um, bylaw in terms of the colors and the materials and so forth, but I don't see much of a change from when they first presented it. So just is it in our that. bylaw? It is. So please visit Anything that. Anything in commercial zones, it requires certain certain um, amenities and, and certain types of finishes and that type of thing. So um, I encourage the board to look at that. Okay. Ken, want to take this, remind me next time or take some notes on that so we look at it with the yeah. colors. Yeah. All right. And please, sir, if you visit that bylaw for the colors, make sure you comply with the bylaw. We believe we are in full compliance okay. with the bylaw. I understand that there may be um, uh, personal uh, views on certain colors and things along those lines, but we are uh, confident that we are in compliance with the bylaw. But again, I, I appreciate the comments and we are always willing to explore those. All right, very well. Anything else, gentlemen? Ma'am? No, not at this time. <laughs> All right, so when would you like to come back? Next uh, time is August 25th. I think August 25th is. Does that give Charlie enough time? Charlie, is that enough time, August 25th? I put in my letter, I'd have my report done in time for the meeting on the 25th. Okay. I'd like to have an opportunity to maybe have a uh, see that beforehand so we may be able to have some conversations. Would it be, is that enough time for you to get something to us a I'll, few days? I'll get it as soon as I can. No, I understand. I just want to make sure we have enough time to maybe have a conversation about some of your stuff. We can have a conversation about it at any time. Um, there may not be enough time to get that done and you turn something around if I find something you need to change. But it'll certainly be done in time and, and for a Thank you very uh, much. Mr. Mr. So, Chair. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be here on the 25th. I just looked at my schedule, and I don't think you are either, correct? Yeah. Sorry, and okay. I suggest we push it out four weeks instead of two weeks. I know that puts you guys, but, and that gives you time to go back. If, if, if so, the engineer can come up with a response and through the, through the planning department get it to you, Maybe you guys can communicate between each other so when you do come back in four weeks instead of two weeks. So you guys will only have three or four members on the 25th? It won't be a full? We are a five board member. You need four out of five. Exactly. If we four, you have, you have, you have the right to say I and don't want to. both of you are going on the 25th? Okay. Right. So I think it's the best we go to September. I yeah, apologize. Me. So, uh, me too. I, I, I've said that back in May. I'm leaving. So, you know. What's the date? September 8th. Eight. September 8th. So, is that good? September 8th? That's acceptable. Yes. Thank you. All right. And how are we doing in timing for. for uh, we have time for them, right? With yes, we do. We good? We're good. All right. What is that? What do I do there? All right, so uh, anything else before we get a motion to continue? Just one question, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Sure, go ahead. Uh, it's been mentioned two or three times about flashing lights. I wonder if we could have a, a detailed description, not at this time, but maybe the next time, about those flashing lights. Some people are susceptible to seizures and convulsion based on flashing lights, and if they're vivid, uh, you know, and, and the type that would do that, I think we need to be concerned about that. That's already on my list to provide right. additional information on. I mean, I think it would be a problem if you're flashing light directed to the highway. I think it would be a problem. Yep. So that's something we'll have more you have to address. That, yeah. All right. Anything else? Make yeah. a motion that this meeting be continued for four weeks, which will bring us to. September 25th? 8th. Tw September 8th, pardon me. September 8th. I have a motion to continue 31-21 by Jim till September 8th. Do I have a second? Aye, second. Second by Richard. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. So we see you gentlemen on uh, September 8th. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Before, thank you. Thank you. Thank before we go... Uh, we have uh, on nature's medicine, and they wanted to continue to August 11th. I forget to add this is on today. 
Was that Nat the Nature Medicine, they want to change the hours. Uh, for some reason, I believe this we came in front of us. Last week, right? Last, last week, I mean, but last the selectmen, meeting? I thought, approved it. For the changing of hours? So what do they need us for? The special permit that was issued. Huh? The special permit had hours that was issued in there. Okay. So did, did, did we, did we, we did not, we discussed it? It was continued to tonight. So we need to make it, we need to make a decision tonight. I get it. So we discussed this before. The question is, I believe, I speak kind of freely, but I believe yeah, the question yeah. is, um, is it a minor modification or is it a major modification? If this board determines that this is a minor modification, then we can say, yeah, sure. But if we decide that it's a major modification, it needs to come back formally in front of this board as a major modification. All right, so what the board thinks, what do you guys think? What, what are the hours, sir? I think it's minor. It, it, it's minor. I mean, it's not, it's not an incredible amount of increase in hours, right? The hours are 8 to 10, Sunday 10 to 8, but I don't know what they were. 7 to 7. There was seven to seven? Yeah. So they want them eight to ten. Right. Because so people go out late more to get two, high. Two hours <laughs> they they want to open a little later because the people... A little late. They're going to open an seven. hour later and close two hours later. Where is, that? Where is it located? At the Jordan Plaza, my oh. ex-building. <laughs> it's not open yet. Right, right. Would that be the only thing open at 10 o'clock in that area at that time of night or just the restaurants? No, Ella, yeah, restaurants. Oh, okay. Ella's, Lindsay's. Yep, yep. 7-Eleven's there. Ella's yeah. closed at 9 now. I'm really, it's not a pain no. in the butt. Got to go there early. <laughs> well, I, believe it's a I, I guess my comment on extending the hours is that it's, it's kind of spreads out the, um, the, the traffic flow instead of everybody coming at, at one time. Um, People, um, I mean, the, the, the once, once was a time in my lifetime when bars were open till one o'clock in the morning and some had two o'clock licenses and restaurants stopped serving at 11 o'clock at night. Now the town seems to close down at eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. You can't find anything open, but that doesn't mean we all have to <laughs> follow that I, suit. Right. They want to be open till 10. It's not a problem with me. What's what's everybody's thought on on um, the rest of the plaza? I'm assuming is closed at what time? I mean, because you have other businesses that are going to be shut down, and what they all uh, shut down huh? after five? They all gone. Oh, after five, they're all gone. So we don't. I don't see. I, I don't well, see. In terms of security, there's no issue. Yeah. They have their own. They have their own. They sell. Uh, the marijuana thing, so that's I know security. that's why I'm concerned about the security. Yeah, they yeah. have security, they have all these things, so I'm sure I don't see a problem myself, so I don't know about you guys. Did Jake, you okay with that? Okay. Richard, I make I'm, a motion. I'm, I'm fine with it, sir. I make a motion that should be considered a minor modification, and we approve the new hours. Well, we got to decide whether it's minor or major first, yeah. Do I have a second on minor modification? Second. <clears throat> second by Jake. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I further motion that aye. we uh, approve the hours as requested. Do I have a second on approve the hours? Second. Second by Jake. All in favor say aye. 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 Deny. Okay, so we 4 1 0. Okay, so it carries. Thank you. And then. Uh, Motion. Make a motion to adjourn. I'd I have some questions first. Oop. Both new strong. Veronica, if I may, did you say uh, it's a minor or mo major modification? I denied the, that it's a minor modification. Oh, okay. So you and think I it's a major? I do. Okay, I didn't hear that. Oh. All right, so also in major, Veronica is a no. For a while, I thought it was major myself, but it's okay. It's too late now. All right. Any other business you guys like to discuss? Yes. What would you like? So in reading the size of the signs, yeah. um, I'd like some clarification because according to how I'm reading this um, bylaw, 
Section 115.4 states that no sign shall be larger than 40 square feet except for a mall sign or shopping center sign or freestanding sign, which shall be no larger than 120 square feet. And then section 1126 for freestanding size regulations. However, section 1126 also talks about um, sign sizes for walls and roofs, but it would be my interpretation based on this that it's talking about sign sizes for mall signs or shopping center signs, not for this type of a building. So the, the, the wall or roof signage calculated would be calculating for the mall or for a shopping center, and that would be that limitation for those types of buildings, but not necessarily. I think that this freestanding building is actually does have a limit of 40 square feet. Maximum 40, you're saying? Yes, I, that's, I, that's how I'm interpreting what, what's written. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll have David check onto that, the commissioner. Also, there's a new uh, sign bylaw, you said, or parking bylaw, it can? Sign bylaw. So maybe it's more, it's easier or tougher, so we don't know. So, but we'll, let, we'll make sure the, the commissioner checks on it, and he'll interpret it better for us. Okay? Sure. Good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Anything else? Hear none. So want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. A motion to adjourn Second. by Jim. Second by Jake. All in favor say aye. 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 Of course, abstain. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. What are you?